Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to perform a USB flashback on the ASUS B450 M K Mark II. It's pretty straightforward, but there are a few things which may get you when you're trying to do this for the first time. So, watch the video through, and then you should be able to perform this task with ease. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video, we're we'll doing a USB BIOS flashback for the ASUS Prime B450M-K Mark II. Now this board actually is a pretty decent option for those of you on the market at the moment looking to build a cheap PC. One of the features that has been added to the Mark II version over the original is the fact that we do now have a USB BIOS flashback button. So if you're potentially thinking you wanna save some money on your motherboard and pick up a slightly newer AMD Ryzen processor like this one, which is the Ryzen 5 4500. You can pretty much buy any processor you want and it's gonna work straight away with this motherboard regardless of the boss which is already on it because you can go ahead and flash it. Now in order to flash it, there's gonna be some things you are gonna definitely need. One of which is a working computer with a USB port so you can actually download the boss and extract it. You'll also need a USB stick. This is the one we use pretty much all the time. Great little device. I'll put some links in the video description. So if you haven't got a USB stick already, then you can certainly go ahead and buy one and get one delivered to you either the same day or next day from Amazon. Other things you'll need is a stable work surface, ideally a table. Uh, you can use your motherboard box to rest the motherboard on. That's absolutely fine. You will also need a power supply. So we've got our little thermal take unit here, which is always very handy. And you only need to connect up two lots of power one of which is gonna be the main 24 pin power connector, which goes onto the motherboard into this port here. And also you're gonna want your EPS connector, which is the one that goes in the top corner here. So this is a four or eight pin lead, uh, which is gonna be this one, which we'll plug into our power supply also. Other than that, that is pretty much it. Although we will go to the computer now and show you how to set up your USB drive to avoid any potential problems. Okay, so we're on our Windows 11 PC and I've just inserted the USB drive and as you can see, there are some files on there already. So ideally what you want to do is to erase the drive. So obviously make sure there's nothing on the drive that you actually need to keep. And also there's something else you should check for as well is to make sure that the USB stick is in the MBR format rather than being GPT. If you're not entirely sure, there's a pretty easy way of doing it. So just go to command, open the command prompt as administrator, you'll get the user account thing come up so click OK when that comes up and then you'll have the command prompt so you want to use the disk part command so disk part this all will be in the video description as well so you can check out from there so we're going to run disk part and what you want to do is type in list disk to find out your disks so our USB is the 32 gig one it shows up as 28 gigs and as you can see at the moment the main drive is showing up as a GPT and the USB doesn't have a star there. So that's great. If it does, you can just type in the clean command, which uh, we'll go ahead and do anyway. Actually, first of all, we have to select disk one. So disk one is now the selected disk. Obviously, if you get the wrong disk here, this could erase all your data, so do be careful. And all we wanna do is type in clean. And there we go, that is the disk now cleaned. Now, if you want to as well, you can do convert MBR if you're not entirely sure. And there we go. This part has successfully converted the selected disk to the MBR format. So that is all we need to do there. What we can do now is go into either my computer or go into disk management. Disk management is probably going to be the easier one to do. And you're going to see now you've got a clean disk, which is unallocated. So we're going to right click on it. We're going to choose new simple volume and we'll go through the wizard here. Just click on next, assign a drive letter. We can certainly do that. And at this point here, ask you what format. So we actually want the drive to be FAT32 because that is the only format that will actually work. Remove our new volume, don't need that there. And all allocation size you can leave to default and perform a quick format. Click on next and it'll basically tell you what it's doing. Just make sure it does say FAT32 there and that'll be absolutely fine. So click on finish. And there we go, there is our nice clean USB drive in the MBR format. So that's the first part of it done. So we've now prepared our drive so we can close all these windows. The next thing to do is to actually obtain the BIOS. So let's go ahead and go to the ASUS website. Again, I'll try and put links for this in the video description. So make sure you get the right one. So this is a version two, Mark II or MK2. And you wanna go 
to the support section. Now, if you're not too sure which BIOS you actually need, then you can go through and go to CPU memory support, scroll through and see what processors are supported, and it'll tell you BIOS has been validated since those particular versions. So you can find your processor, scroll down, find the right one. Realistically, I would say you're probably best off flashing the BIOS to the very latest version anyway, just to mitigate any potential issues with security that are now found in the AMD processors. So what we'll do is go to driver and utility, and we'll go to BIOS and firmware. If the layout of this changes, then obviously just try and look for BIOS and firmware. So it's gonna show you the latest BIOS there. So the latest version is 4002, which was released on the 21st of the 3rd, 2023. We're currently in the beginning of May at the moment, so this is a pretty new one. And as you can see there, so this updates the AGISA version to Combo V2 Pi 1208, and also mitigates the AMD potential security vulnerabilities, etc. It'll tell you all about it there. So if you're flashing from actually in the BIOS and you've got a working system already, then you don't need to rename the file. If you're doing it as a USB flashback, you do have to rename the file to something which the system can recognize. I do get questions all the time saying, do you have to rename the file? Yes, you definitely do, because otherwise it won't be recognized and it will not flash if you're using USB flashback. So we're gonna click on download. Actually, before we do that, if you want to, you can do show all, you can see the various versions which are available, etc., etc. but I would always recommend going for the very latest one. So we're gonna click on download and we'll save it to our Windows desktop, because that's uh, nice and simple for our particular needs. So we can minimize this window now. We've got our zip file, so we want to extract that. So right click and choose extract all. And we can just leave that as it is. Click on extract. And there we go, there are our files. So this file as it stands can be used if your system is working and you have access to the BIOS. You can just copy that to a USB stick and flash that BIOS. If your system is not working and you need to flash the BIOS in order to get a working BIOS, then you have to use BIOS Renamer. It's pretty straightforward. All you do is double click it and this will come up at DOS window and it will explain what it's gonna do. So it says there, the file's been renamed, so it's already done. To use USB flashback, copy the file to the root of your USB flash drive, which you've already got ready. Press any key to continue. So there we go. Now our file name has changed to something which the system can actually recognize. So what we wanna do is to right click on there and you can choose either cut or copy. The choice is entirely up to you. And then go down to your USB drive, right click and choose paste or use control V, whichever you choose to do. And that is it. Make sure the file length or file size rather is 32 megabytes. In this instance it's 32.772 kilobytes, which is basically the same thing. So that's right, that is absolutely fine. And it is a cap file, which is what we wanna see. So we can close that down now, take out the USB drive, and we can go over to the system and actually start flashing. Okay, so that is that part out of the way. So let's get on and flash the BIOS. So we've got our motherboard. We're gonna use the uh, the box to flash it on just as somewhere to rest it on. We've got our power supply and the appropriate cables connected. So we put this over here and we've got our USB drive with the BIOS on. Now it's very important that you actually put the USB in the right slot. So on the back of this particular motherboard, you'll see where the keyboard style or PS2 connector is. The BIOS flashback port, is the one at the bottom there. If you look at the actual IO shield for the motherboard, it is actually stamped on there and it says BIOS on it. So make sure you use the right one, otherwise again, it just simply will not flash. So we're gonna plug it into that port there. If you're wondering where the USB flashback button is, it is on this end there, so just a little toggle. I would suggest actually clicking the button and you should hear it click like this. So when you press it, it gets a click. If for some reason it doesn't click, then potentially there might be a fault with the button itself. So if you're having problems with the flash, it could be because the button is just basically broken. It does stick out quite a bit and it's only a very cheap plastic, so potentially that could be an issue. So do double check that. You don't need anything on the board when you're doing a USB flashback. If you've already built the system, then I would suggest the best thing to do, you can leave the processor installed. There's no reason why not, but I would suggest removing the RAM and potentially any bootable drives just so it doesn't try and boot. Other than that, all you need to connect is our 24 pin main power and our EPS connection there. So let's go ahead and plug those in now. So we'll do the 24 pin first of all in this back section. Just make sure it clicks in and it's locked in place. And then we're gonna get our EPS connector. Yours may say something like CPU or something on there. Ideally it will do, but not all power supplies will. So plug that one as well. Make sure it's, uh, there we go, clicked into place and then you can apply power to the actual power supply. 
So make sure it's in the off position to start with. Plug in your power cable and now we're ready to go. So we'll turn on the power supply. And what you wanna do is make sure first of all that there is illumination. So we've actually got some illumination on the board there. You can probably just about see it shining through there onto the motherboard box at the back. So that means the motherboard is getting power. That is a, a good sign. So what we wanna do next is press and hold the BOSS flashback button for about two or three seconds, just hold it in place and you should see the BOSS LED flash start flashing and then we're basically starting the process. So just do a count of two or three. One, two, three. And there we go. We can see now quite clearly that our USB BOSS flashback light is flashing and that'll flash for a few seconds. It may change speeds, etc. Essentially what you wanna do now is just leave the system to do its own thing. It's gonna be reading the drive to start with. If you get to a point where it flashes a few times and then stops, it means the drive is potentially not being recognized by the system or you've gone somewhere wrong actually in the setup process or maybe extracting the file. So just keep an eye out for that. And yeah, we're just uh, let that current do its thing. I think it's actually changed speed now. But yeah, basically just let it keep on going until that light turns off. It should take somewhere in the region of about four to five minutes to complete the task. So just be patient, let it do its thing. If it goes on for much longer than that, say 10 minutes plus, then again, something has gone wrong or potentially it doesn't like the file which is on there, in which case you kind of want to retract your steps, potentially swap out for a different USB drive. But anyway, we'll let that carry on for a bit and uh, we'll come back when it's finished. Okay, so as you can see, the, uh, the BOSS flashback LED has now extinguished there. We've still got the lights on the motherboard, so the motherboard is still powered up. So what we're gonna to wanna to do now is to just simply go over to the power supply and click it to the off position. And wait for the LEDs to extinguish themselves. And there we go. It takes a little while depending on how much charge is left in your power supply, etc. So that is pretty much it. Now we can unplug our USB flash drive and we can get on with the rest of the build process. So at this point now, uh, pretty much you're ready to go. Personally, I would say your best bet is to install your processor, stick your RAM on there, uh, graphics card if necessary, and just make sure that it actually will post and show a post screen or a bar screen before you carry on doing anything else. Otherwise, if you get to the point where you put this into your system, build everything up, connect up everything, and then for some reason you turn it on, it doesn't work, you've got a lot of fault finding and potentially you're gonna to have to take it all apart anyway to potentially send the board back, etc. So yeah, definitely worth doing that. If you can, just build up a little test rig just to make sure that you get a screen. That way, then if you put it into the system, then it doesn't post, you know that something's gone wrong in that process. Entirely up to you, but uh, it's happened a few times where I've done a flash, built a system, not tested it, and then it hasn't posted for some reason. So yeah, it saves backtracking if you can do it. Anyway, I've rabbited on for way too long. Hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, then hit subscribe and the chime notification, and that way you'll get notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.